short time ago I posted a video showing this Jantec programmable signal generator, it's a PSG9080 and it's uh, quite an interesting device, it's very cheap and um, it's essentially an arbitrary signal generator and frequency counter. It's 14-bit uh, resolution, 300 mega samples per second and it uh, goes up to 80 megahertz output for the sine wave. Um, I pointed out, I didn't really do a full review, I just uh, did a very brief introduction to it just to uh, make people aware that it existed. It's uh, quite cheap and uh, I think is a very suitable uh, entry level signal generator for anyone that's trying to get into electronics. And um, had some very interesting comments, a couple in particular I thought were uh, particularly interesting. So I decided to make this video. Um, just an extra video to address those comments but also to um, maybe show a, f uh, a few uh, examples as to how this compares in some aspects to other generators and kind of where it fits into the sort of grand scheme of things with regard to performance. It's quite difficult to compare one signal generator to another if they're not all meant for the same purpose because the output signal uh, what you need from it kind of depends on what you're doing and um, the first comment uh, was in response to uh, my comment that you can adjust the frequency you can fine-tune the frequency output of this to uh, very precise limits and you can't normally do that with most other types of generators very easily and the comment was that well you know quite often you don't really need uh, very uh, accurate signal generators uh, for hobby use and um, that's absolutely true, you don't, and that's not really what um, I was trying to point out with that particular feature. Uh, for me at least, it's not really the absolute accuracy. I wouldn't use this if I was doing something that required very high precision testing. Um, it's because it enables you to possibly synchronize it or adjust it to match other equipment. So a lot of generators have an external clock input that you can use for the same purpose. Uh, but even so it's very useful at least for me being able to fine-tune the frequency uh, and also the amplitude as well if you need to on this particular device to match other equipment in the lab. Uh, a good example of this is the um, programmable uh, power supplies that you tend to get these days they tend to go down to one millivolt and one milliamp resolution uh, in terms of adjustment it's very rare that you need that, but when you do need it, it's very useful to have. So that was really the point there. It's not that you necessarily need very high precision uh, frequency adjustment. It's just useful being able to uh, tweak it to match something else that you're working on. Before I continue, apologies for all the fan noise. I do have quite a few pieces of equipment running and they've all got fans running, making a bit of a racket but I needed to leave these all running for a few hours before I did this demonstration. So this is in response to a comment and question that was posted on the PSG 9080 video and that was in relation to the harmonics of the signal output. Now of course this only applies to the sine wave output of the uh, generators, the other um, signals this doesn't apply to. If you're not familiar with um, the concept of harmonics for a signal then um, just in brief if you take a sine wave output from a signal generator and it's got no distortion it's very pure and then you plot it on something like a spectral analyzer which shows signals in the frequency domain then you should get a single spike and that's just um, an amplitude at a particular frequency and there shouldn't be any other frequency elements um, visible on the uh, analyzer. Anytime you get distortion in the sine wave then that is by virtue of another frequency being mixed with the fundamental frequencies. In other words your sine wave has got uh, other signals mixed in with it and that causes a distortion of the sine wave. So for a pure sine wave you should get a single peak. Now it's kind of a bit misleading as to whether it matters or not if you're seeing um, other signals mixed in with your fundamental sine wave. It really comes down to the lack of distortion in the sine wave and whether that's important to you. So 
to try and uh, explain this a bit more clearly, what we're going to do here is look at the output from the various signal generators that I have here. And um, we'll look at the um, outputs on the uh, spectrum analyzer and see how they compare. So we'll start off with the uh, Gentech. So we'll connect this to the output of channel one. I've got all these set up for the same output. So they're all set for 20 megahertz. Don't worry if the signal levels look a bit weird here. It's just that uh, these are not particularly accurate in terms of outputting values in uh, DBM. Um, but so I needed to tweak these to give the correct output. They are relatively close. This one's showing 1.34 volts peak to peak and this one's showing 1.415 volts peak to peak. Should of course be one volt peak to peak. Okay, so if I turn the output of this one on, uh, you can see we've got this range of um, signals and I do have this set to sine wave and each of these uh, peaks is a, a harmonic frequency. So if we start off with the peak on the far left, then what we're looking at here is, let's get this on the, so what we're looking at here, uh, you probably can't read it, but it's uh, saying 20 megahertz and the value is around zero dB. That's repeated down here. If we look at the next um, peak along to the right, then that's the first harmonic that we're looking at. So this is now at 40 megahertz, but we're down to minus 30 dB. So it's 30 dB approximately lower than the fundamental. Um, might not sound a great deal, but this is a, a log scale, don't forget, and 30 dB is quite a significant drop in signal level. If we go across to the next signal, then this is uh, around 40 uh, dB down from the fundamental, and we can keep going down, we can see the uh, various uh, harmonics here. So it kind of looks terrible, it looks like this is um, all over the place, but this is fairly typical for this type of generator, and a lot of this comes down to the way that the uh, signals are being generated within the, uh, the arbitrary function generator. Whether this is important to you or not depends entirely on what you're using this for. If you need a high purity clean sine wave then this would not be of any use to you. You could of course filter it to get rid of the harmonics and some generators have a filter built in. But to be honest you wouldn't really be using a generator like this to do precision work in terms of signal purity. It's not really what it's for. It's to give you access to a whole range of different ways to generate different types of signal. Um, but just to do a direct comparison, if we now switch the cable to, I've got a Siglent SDG1020 here, and this is a 20 megahertz version, that's why I've got it set to 20 megahertz because that's as high as this will go. So if we plug the cable into this one and then turn the output on, you can see straight away this looks significantly different and if we go to the left you'll see that we are at uh, still 0 dB, 20 megahertz. But if we now look at the next peak on the right, 40 megahertz, that's the first harmonic. But this is down at minus 50 dB. So extremely nice looking output, very low distortion in the sine wave. However, we do have these other artifacts in here and although they're not very uh, high, it does give you some idea as to how uh, the siglent generates these signals. Um, but either way, this is showing up as a, a much better output, it's much cleaner sine wave and uh, that's what you'd expect. This is significantly more expensive than the Juntek. Whether this is important to you or not is um, down to what you're going to use it for. For me, I still would not use the Siglent for RF uh, high precision work. Um, these uh, artifacts, it's not just the level, level of the first is fine, but the others would cause issues for the type of work that I use this uh, type of device for when using uh, them for RF work. When we're talking about RF um, design, then we're looking down, you know, minus 100 dB or, or better for uh, the signal levels that we're trying to uh, distinguish. 
So if we want to use an actual RF signal generator, then we'd use something uh, a bit like this TTI. This is a, T, a TTI TGR 1040. These are no longer made. I bought this back in, I think, uh, 1999. And um, I think it cost about £1,500 at the time, but that's equivalent to around £2,600 in today's money. Um, but if I turn this on, then you can see again we're getting all these uh, harmonics and that's as I said it's not necessarily a big problem what we're looking for is a very clean pure sine wave at the fundamental frequency the rest of it you tend to filter out but the main thing here is we're getting a very nice clean progression of these harmonics and that is important for uh, using this in a proper uh, test environment. Um, having said that, this and I use this a great deal in the RF development that I carried out uh, within my business and um, the modern equivalent of this is no longer made. The modern equivalent would be something like the TGR 2051 and they cost about £2,000 or so, so fairly comparable in uh, real terms as to what this cost. The new ones do tend to have far more features um, but uh, the output from them is very similar to this. Now if you want to go beyond this then you need something that is significantly more expensive. So if we have a quick look uh, up on the top rack, I'm just going to move the camera. So we've got something like this, this is a Roden Schwartz SMIQ-02B, let's put the camera back. And that is the type of device you would need if you wanted to do any real serious development work. I'll just plug the cable into that and we'll have a look at how the signal compares. So as you can see, much cleaner signal. If we go back to the left you'll see that you'll see that um, 20 megahertz around 0 dB and the next peak on the right again is at minus 50 so it appears to be comparable to the signals. The only difference is we don't have these other artifacts uh, showing up in the signal. Also the uh, noise floor is significantly lower. So if we look at another peak to towards the right you'll see there's nothing found. Um, the noise floor is here is down around minus 60 um, dB. If we go back to the signals which although on the face of it looked like a some similar type of output you can see the noise floor especially down in the area we're interested in is very much higher and there's all manner of artifacts uh, around here so although it looks fairly similar on the face of it they are very different and I'll just go back to the Rodin Schwartz so we can have another look at that one and you can see that the noise floor is significantly lower. You might not think it's that important but if you're trying to uh, discriminate signals that are down well below minus 100 dB then this becomes increasingly important and something like the signals, although it looks um, superficially much superior to the others uh, still wouldn't be any use for that purpose and so um, it's still limited as to what you can do with it. Um, but for what they're for they are very good, just don't get carried away and um, distracted with the level of the harmonics. Chances are they're not really important to you and uh, if they are important enough that you need very low values then really this probably still isn't going to be of any use to you. Okay so back at the Gentech, as I say the uh, harmonics may look fairly bad but um, as I also said, um, don't get carried away um, with this. It doesn't necessarily mean that the uh, signal generator is, is not usable or is any worse than uh, another type. It really depends on what you're going to use it for. And most of the time, uh, for normal use of an arbitrary waveform generator, these harmonics do not matter at all. And even if you're doing some fairly precise work, if you take an expensive RF signal generator, Okay, so you can still see, even with an expensive RF signal generator, you still get these um, uh, harmonics showing up. It's only when you get to the very top end ones uh, that you get the uh, filtering uh, required to get rid of the harmonics. 
Um, but again, notice with this TTR unit, the noise floor is very much lower than on the Siglent. And that's what's important for a generator like this. It's the harmonics normally aren't that much of a problem, but the noise that you're uh, getting out of the um, generator can be quite uh, an issue when you're working on certain types of project. So to bear that in mind, it's not just the harmonics, it's the noise as well, and um, the distortion, noise, everything else, uh, all need to be taken into account when you're talking about the various types of signal generator.